Welcome aboard on our journey across the Pacific Ocean. Wondering how we got here? Check out part one and two. Gary wanted some French Polynesian toast this morning for breakfast. And I think that's a great idea, but I'm gonna need a second set of hands because the boat's pretty, pretty rocking and rolling right now. But we're having some great winds. We have like 15 knots right behind the beam. And this is what champagne sailing's like. <laughs> it's really nice. So the vibe on board is high. Okay, ready? Ready. So we've got this horizon tracking mode on these new GoPros and it's pretty cool because it will actually keep the GoPro view steady to the horizon. So you can actually see how much the boat's moving in here when we film in this mode. Might be making you a little sick, but imagine how it is to be on the boat for 13 days now with it moving like this. Yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. I thought it would be a little calmer out here, but we really haven't had one calm day. Um, I thought we'd have like a calm day and then a couple rough days and a calm day, but so far it's just been this constant roll. Enjoy your breakfast. I already ate mine while she was finishing up the last of it. That way we can use one plate and have less <laughs> dirty dishes. Got some pretty crazy squall lines happening now. Yeah, that could be a lot of wind. It just packed up to like 20 knots, so I'll keep an eye on it and reef if we need to. Okay. halfway and we finally made it to the doldrums and it is really hot here we can tell we're getting close to the equator but we've been dodging these squalls since yesterday so it's made for an interesting past couple days check out this squall line right over there pretty cool line in the cloud but we've got our genoa reefed and we've got our bubble all shut up <laughs> and now we just wait for it to pass it's not bad it's only 20 knots of wind nothing crazy well at least it's not our main sail <laughs> oh wait stitching our beanbag blew out last night Here you go, you're almost done. Yeah, this is the last stitch. I'm not gonna let Brooke complain about having to stitch a bean bag after what I had to do with our toilet the other day. <laughs> so it's day 13 and all these days are really just blending together. Our passage as a whole has been pretty dull, which I'm not complaining. <laughs> um, it's nice that it's been uneventful but it's kind of just been like the same thing day after day after day and it's cloudy now. So yeah, just not much happening at all. Um, we've not seen any whales or dolphins or 
ships or really anything and the cloudy skies are making it even more boring. Um, but the good news is that One Life is doing amazing and yeah, we're hanging in there. But tonight I think to boost our mood a little bit, uh, we're gonna make a nice dinner hopefully. And some of our veggies are starting to go bad, um, which we expected to happen. It's been two weeks now. Well, almost two weeks, but two weeks since we bought them. So we're going to try to do a little steak and veggie fry up and just lay here and do nothing the rest of the day. Watch the waves roll by, right? Nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. <laughs> balls all around us so neither of us have really gotten much sleep um, this is kind of like what what it looks like right now so there's Gary there we've got radar up there um, and we're still are alternating our watches but it's just with the rain and stuff it's it's hard to sleep so a bit of a sleepless night but so what's going on? Good night. Yesterday, um, well last night actually, we hit our halfway point mileage wise. And I think it's day, I don't know, day 13 or 14 for us, not sure. But we enter the doldrums and the doldrums have been super interesting for us. Um, it's supposed to be, well, Gary can explain it because he's better at this than me. How's it going, Gary? Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, do you want to talk about, um, tell our patrons about the, I like the zone we're in right now? Yeah, so it's commonly called the doldrums, but that's probably not really the best name for it. It's more accurately called the intertropical convergence zone, which is basically where you have the northern trade winds and the southern trade winds, and they're kind of converging along the equator here. And it's really warm water. There's a lot of sunlight, so there's a lot of convection in the water too. And convection is, of course, what drives squalls. So you've got all of this energy kind of like boiling along the equator here. And it just, it's not a very calm area. I mean, there are periods with no wind, but then there's 20 knot squalls and heavy rain that comes out of nowhere. So it's been uh, interesting. We motored for almost 24 hours, I think, and went through a few squalls. It's just really tough to sail because the wind is changing like every half hour, which direction and how, how strong it is. So we motored for a bit, but we've got pretty strong southeasterlies right now. So we've got the sails out and we're moving towards the Marquesas. Yeah, so we actually, you might have seen on our track, it's more south than west. Yeah, we decided to try to make as much southing as possible early on because in the southern hemisphere, these trade winds are southeasterly. Which means if we went too far west and then tried to head down towards the Macasas, we'd be beating into the winds to get there. So hopefully by heading south first, we'll be able to put the winds on the beam and do some nice reaching over to the Marquesas instead. Yeah, we'll see how that works out for us. What are you making, Gary? Sausages and hot dogs. 
Yay, Brooke's favorite hot dog. <laughs> hammered with squalls again tonight. <laughs> you can hear the rain. It's crazy. It is 7 a.m and it's still really cloudy. It rains pretty much all night. Uh, we did a lot of sail changes and just tried to keep sailing, which was good, but we didn't get much sleep. So Gary's down sleeping now and we have about three knots of wind. So I'm just motoring at low RPMs, just trying to make a bit of miles and not use much fuel. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be another cloudy day we really just want to get out of the doldrums and get back into the trade winds so we can get back to sailing. Not much of a sunrise. This is what our cockpit looks like after a night of many sail changes. Just lines. Just stuff everywhere. So I'm going to get it tidied back up this morning. sleep we pretty much just got stuck in this skull for like five hours straight it was this just giant massive signature on the radar and it had lots of wind lots of rain and it just stuck on top of us there was a little bit of lightning around which is always pretty terrifying especially being this far out to sea but luckily none of the strikes were really within a few miles of us so but today is a new day and it looks like we're finally outside of the doldrums, outside of the intertropical convergence zone. We've got 15 knots of southeast trade winds on our beam and we're ripping along at like six or seven knots, which is awesome. We still have 1,273 nautical miles to go, which means we're more than halfway there. And that's amazing. It's already been, I think, two weeks out here at sea which is our longest sail by a number of days already. And we've got that 1,200 plus miles to go, which is still like double what our longest sail was before in terms of miles. So we've got a long way to go still. Hopefully about 10 days until we make landfall in the Marquesas. Today was exactly what we needed after last night. This morning, Brooke rolled out the head sail and we had about 10 knots on the beam and we've had 10 knots on the beam all day. Hopefully these trade winds hold up 
and we don't get the uh, the doldrums pushing down to where we are. It seems like the wind's kind of dying off right now as the sun goes down, but hopefully it holds out just enough to keep sailing. We're settling into our night watches once again. Night number 14, I think, 15. Well, we've been out here for two weeks and last night was pretty hectic on us and we didn't get much sleep, obviously. So Gary just fired up the radar. He's gonna check it out and see what's on the horizon for us. So far, so good? So far, so good, but they can pop up out of nowhere. What? <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. That was like some sort of communication on the VHF. Is there any boats nearby? Yeah, we've not seen any other vessels pop up on our AIS and I don't know how long. The closest people to us right now might be on the space station as they pass overhead. We've heard that, yeah. It's, it's pretty wild. Probably true right now. Probably true. But... All right, well, we'll keep our eye on the radar and hopefully have a quiet night. During our night watches, we tend to sail more conservatively to slow the boat down to allow each other to get a little more sleep. But when the sun rises, we adjust our sails to pick up some more speed. We have about 12 to 15 knots right on the beam. And we're just listening to music, having a little cockpit dance party. And tomorrow is a really big day because if all goes as planned, we should cross the equator in the morning as the sun comes up, hopefully. So trying to think of festivities to do. I'm going to chill some champagne tonight. Um, but yeah, it's a, a big moment for us. So we're super excited. We're just chilling. It's so nice out right now. Uh, I wish you guys could experience this with us, but here it is. Oh my gosh, so it's sunset. Well, the sun's just set actually. It's like 8 p.m. It's getting ready to be my watch and Gary shouted at me. It's like, look, and there's no way that you can see it on camera, but there's a light up ahead. Um, pretty close. Is there anything on AIS? No. We are fortunate to have radar on board. Not only do we use it to monitor squalls, we also use it to recognize boat traffic. In this situation, the boat did not appear on AIS. But with the help of our radar, we were able to track the vessel's course and speed to ensure we didn't get too close. So just after the sunset here, I spotted the white light on the horizon that was kind of coming and going behind the swells. So we pulled up our radar and identified it. It did not show up on our AIS at all. And we're way out here in the middle of the ocean. So it's not too small of a boat to have AIS it's probably just turned off. It's probably a fishing vessel and they don't want people tracking where they're fishing. So they turn off their AIS, but they were moving pretty quickly across our bow at like five miles in front of us and they're way off in the distance now. So all clear, but we'll definitely have to keep a little bit more of a vigilant watch tonight for other traffic since they won't go on AIS and they might not set off our AIS alarm. How excited were you? <laughs> I was pretty excited. <laughs> That's the first vessel of any kind that we've seen in maybe maybe 12 days or something like that. Yeah. It just goes to show just how wide open the Pacific Ocean is. It's enormous and we're just a little speck out here. So what are you doing? <laughs> Southern Cross on Spotify because we just spotted the Southern Cross 
for the first time and it's pretty amazing. And there's actually not many clouds in the sky tonight for the first time so we can see the stars. Berkey, guess where we are? The equator. Are we? We're gonna cross the equator in a couple minutes. Yeah! How do you feel, you polywog? Slimy polywog. Oh man. You're about to not be a polywog. What does that even mean? Well, I guess it's not official until we do the ceremony. Right, we'll wait for the ceremony. I'm ready! <laughs> I can't believe it! Yeah, I can't believe it. 10, 9, 8, 7, seven 6, six five, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0! We are in the Southern Hemisphere. Let's give a little gift to Neptune now. Here's to you, Neptune. We will chat in the morning. Good morning. It is 6.30 and I was gonna wake Gary up to get our ceremony started, but it's pretty rough out right now. Uh, we've got about 20 knots of wind and the seas are super churned up, so it's not really a good time to be messing around out here. Um, so I'm gonna let him sleep a little bit longer. But I uh, can't believe that we crossed the equator last night and I'm really excited to, to celebrate today and pay our dues to Neptune. What do you think about these conditions for a ceremony? It's what Neptune gives us. We decided to heave to this morning um, to see if we can go ahead and proceed with our ceremony. All right, Neptune left us a little package last night and he told us to open it when the conditions are right. Hear ye, hear ye, by order of King Neptune, I am the patriotic penguin representative of King Neptune. Only those who have proven themselves with appropriate sacrifice will be promoted from a slimy polywog to a shellback. King Neptune, I sacrifice to you my salty sea beard. King Neptune, I bring you my sacrifice of our final chocolate bar aboard One Life. May your ocean savor it and keep us safe forever. Ah, uh, thank you for your sacrifices, but I am afraid that is not enough. I see you slimy polywogs don't have any tattoos. You must change that now. Please inscribe King Neptune, I am your servant on your bodies before we can proceed. Present yourselves to me when this is done. I present to you King Neptune. Gary is forever your servant. Thank you, my obedient servants. You are one step closer to becoming a trusty shellback. There is one more thing to complete. Find the flying fish that has been roasting on deck. 
once located, you both must give him a kiss before you return him to my seas. Back to, oh, it stinks. <laughs> Back to the sea you go, to be with King Neptune. I, the patriotic penguin, the image before you acting as a representative of King Neptune, formerly renounce your status as polywogs and hereby declare that Captain Gary and Mermaid Brooke have proven themselves worthy of the titles of trusted shellbacks and are therefore initiated into the ancient order of the deep. Rise, shellbacks, and celebrate. King Neptune, ruler of the seas, we thank you for your presence and guiding us across the high seas. We salute you and ask for your continued blessings as we continue our journey across the Pacific and beyond. Let's celebrate! Alright, so we have one more thing to do before we move on, and that is to give a little toast. So, got our finest champagne here. Don't pop that cork through your new Dodger. Yeah, I'll pop it outside. Oh, don't pop it into the ocean. Well, the Unless it's actually cork. It's cork. Oh, then you can pop it into the ocean. <laughs> one, two, three. Thank you, King Neptune! And this is totally against our rules. We never drink while sailing, but we're gonna make an exception. We're not sailing, we're hope too. <laughs> True. First sip to Neptune. And now for us. Cheers, Gary. I'm proud of you. Cheers. Okay, party's over. Time to get back to sailing. We're gonna roll in the staysail to come out of the heave two, and then we'll unleash a little bit of the Genoa and get back on the move. We have 1,070 miles to go still. Got our ceremony done just in time. Yeah, this uh, full enclosure is paying off once again. Wind went from like nice 12 knots to 25 knots in a blink. Thank you. 